guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video. And I post new videos every Wednesday, all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And I do that through Bible studies, book reviews, discussions, and more. So as the title says, this is going to be a tag video. This is the Finally Fall book tag. I was tagged by my sis Stephanie over at Colting Beauty and Books. Click the article to her video and I did not get a chance to actually find out who the originator of this tag was. So you can look in the description box down below. All the questions are down there as well. But we're going to get into this. I wrote down the questions. Um, I don't have any answers. This is literally going to be like a real time situation of me pulling the books off the shelf as I read them. I wanted to have my answers already set but I figured it'd be more fun this way. And I am sitting on the opposite side. You guys don't ever get to see the side of my room. Um, my closet is literally like right here. Pay the teddy bear on mine. I threw it in the corner because I have to wash it. But um, it's a giant teddy bear. And these are the shelves where I house the rest of my uh, books that are Christian based. So I have the six bookshelf here, the six row bookshelf. And then I have a three row bookshelf where my printer and all my other stuff is. So new setup. But it's, it's needed for the purpose of this video. So we're going to jump in. There are 11 questions total. So starting with the first one, it says, in autumn, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. A book with a vivid setting. I'm actually going to have to turn around for this one. A book with a vivid setting. Um, A vivid setting. Vivid setting. I'm gonna have to go with Mark of the Raven by Morgan L. Bussey. This is a Christian uh, new adult slash adult uh, fantasy novel and it is so good. I love the Ravenwood Saga trilogy. It is phenomenal but um, I'm gonna have to go with this because the world itself is very vivid and um, very descriptive but also because Lady Celine who is the main character main pr protagonist of the story she has this ability of dream walking I think it is. Yeah she's a dream walker so she gets to go into the minds and dreams of other people and within those dreams it's very vivid it's very um, colorful and bright sometimes sometimes dark but um, you definitely get to see and feel those through the writing so definitely uh, the Ravenwood Saga, in, in general, I would say, is very vivid, but I'm going to pick up The Mark of the Raven as the first book. So, um, that is my answer for that. The second one is, nature is beautiful but also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. I have two books for that. Two books, because they both are um, just mind-blowing. So, I'm going to have to move this out of the way real quick. My bookshelves are not organized all the way. They are like overpacked, so bear with me. Um, okay, so one book is here. I think they're both back in that row. So, yep, yeah, they're both back here. Okay, so first one is gonna have to be Bathsheba Reluctant Beauty by Angela Hunt. This is all about um, Bathsheba, obviously, and her uh relations with king david and it talks about rape and the loss of a child so you definitely get that in here it's very um deep but beautifully written and then i would say hava by Toscali. if you haven't seen my reading blog for this click, click the eye to go watch that but um this book is just so lyrical and profound i adored this book so much but um it definitely talks about some heavy topics because this is at the very beginning when the fall began to happen and you get to go through life with adam and eve as they're now going through everything for the first time they're 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 going through um the loss of a child for the first time the situation with cain and abel they're going through physical abuse because you actually get to see physical abuse happen in this story and again this is fictional we don't know what happened with adam and eve after the fall outside of what the bible tells us but i'm pretty sure we can figure some things out because at this point they're human um not saying that they weren't human before but at this point they actually are able to um sin hopefully i'm making sense but um you get to see that you get to see jealousy in this you get to see um their first time experiencing everything from pooping and vomiting to yelling and arguing with each other and miscommunication and everything so this and um Bathsheba definitely are some hard topics um, some heavy topics, excuse me, but they are both beautifully written, lyrical and everything. I'm not going to put those back on the bookshelf. I refuse. So we are just going to stack them right here. Okay, so the third one is Autumn is Back to School Season. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something new. I have one, but it's on my book cart and I'm going to try to stick to books that I have over here. So a nonfiction book that taught me something. I have so many that I've read. But the question of which ones to pick is the like is, is hard. Uh, 
I apologize if you hear my brother. You guys know how these videos go. So I'm actually going to have to go with this. I don't have the individual book, but I have the bind up of it. And um, it's a screw tape letters by C.S. Lewis. It is a nonfiction and a fiction at the same time. So I'm kind of cheating. But um, the screw tape letters is all about um, a lower demon writing to an upper demon or an upper demon writing to a lower demon on how to um, trap and ensnare a human and you learn so much about how demons sort of kind of think and a lot of the things that we go through in life how they're not just out of nowhere they're actually the scheme of the enemy and I, just, I loved it so much I mean you think I'm joking let's 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 just let's just take a minute to flip through okay so here's the screw tape letters right let's just take a minute to admire <laughs> the beauty that is notes okay the beauty that is the notes in my book i have not completely gone through and did my color coding but i have marked up underlined the entire thing like i want to get a physical copy of just the screw tape letters by itself because it is phenomenal i highly recommend the screw tape letters it is beautiful it can be a little difficult to read so take your time reading it but once you get through it you will be mind blown like it is a beautiful read so definitely the screw tape letters is my pick for that um and again, it is a non-fiction, but it's also a fictional story. So that's why I said I'm kind of sort of cheating. Uh, I don't think I can. Let's see. Um... Oh, here we go. When God's Ways Makes No Sense. Um, I love this by Dr. Larry Crabb. This goes through three different men from the Bible. Oh my gosh, if I can remember. It is Jonah. Right? Yeah. Jonah saw in Habakkuk. I still don't know how to say the word to this day, the, that book in the Bible, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, that word. Um, so yeah, it talks about those three and it, it's beautiful. This came at such a crazy time in my life. Um, it was completely unexpected when it showed up on my doorstep. And um, I just, this book is everything. I've tapped it up to pieces. I love this book so much. If you guys can see, I've marked it up. So definitely, definitely this. Okay. I spent a little too long on that question, <laughs> but let's move on so the fourth one is in order to keep warm it's good to spend time with people we love name a fictional family household friend group that you'd like to be a part of oh mm, i don't know i don't know oh my gosh that's a hard one because i read a lot more biblical fiction than actual christian fiction but if i have to say i'm going to go with um I'm gonna go with this one right here um the actual entire series which I have here but um I'm gonna say uh, no I'm not gonna do it to myself I'm gonna just I'm gonna just pull the whole series down because I, I can't pick a book I have to say all of them so um the cities of refuge series I, I would just love to be a part of the entire entire group because I just I adore everything there is mariah and derek and just their children and oh my god just i would love to be a part of their family um even if i'm just like a friend like we we love it so this would definitely be my option i, I can't pick just one book um i could say the first book because that's when things really begin to brew and um build up for mariah and derek but then i also love following their children in their relationship as they grew throughout the series so yeah just the cities of refuge series in general i would definitely love to be a part of um that family just i don't even want to be a friend i want to be a part of the family like a sister a cousin I i'll be a babysitter at this point okay <laughs> um all right so five the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground show us a pile of autumn colored spines oh gosh autumn colored spines all right so that's about red oranges browns I'm going to speed this part of the video up while I pick the books. So, speeding up. Okay, so I have it. It's not in, like, colorful order, but there we go. Autumn colors. Yeah, so these are the books that I had for that. Again, I'm not putting these back on the shelf, so we're just going to stick it on the side over here. <laughs> because I this, this would be too long. So, moving on, number six says, Autumn is the perfect time for storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. <sighs> I don't own the book that I want to show. And I know Stephanie used this book in her video too, but I'm going to put the covers up here. The Weaver trilogy in general, I don't own them yet, but I trust and believe I'm buying it because all all three of those books got a five star. Me and Steph binge, we didn't binge read, we buddy read them for each for a month and um 
for three months, excuse me, and it was just beautiful. But the whole essence of the Weaver trilogy is that there are these people who have the magical ability of of story weaving. So as they tell a story, there are these magical strands that create um, things from the story. So like if you're talking about um, something that happened on like the sea, then maybe as you're weaving, you'll weave a a boat or something like that. So uh, that entire trilogy is all about storytelling. So outside of that, I don't think I have any other book that I've read that I know of that talks about it. None of these biblical fictions really discuss it. So there we go. Um, moving on, number seven. The nights are getting darker. Share a dark, creepy read. Oh, a dark, creepy read. I don't have. I don't have anything that's dark, creepy. Um, like I'm just getting into that like thriller suspense genre. So I do have one, but it's not really dark. It's more so a little eerie and creepy. So let me go grab it because it's actually on my book cart over there on the other side of the room. So I'm going to go grab it. Okay, so I have The Girl Behind the Red Robe by Ted Decker and Michelle Decker, um, Father Daughter Duo. And it's not really dark per se. I think maybe the first time you read it, it might be dark, but I've read this twice already. My reading vlog is coming. But um, yeah, it has that sort of creepy, eerie vibe because it's all about um, religious thinking and occult and um, how we allow our fears to keep us trapped behind these sort of barriers and stuff it's such a good book it's such a good book the first time you read it it definitely will have them creepy vibes but i feel like once you read it that first time you'll understand the story and you'll be set to go in a second time because the second time around i didn't get those full-on thriller aspects but i still thoroughly enjoyed it i gave this book a five star the first time reading the second time when you guys see my reading vlog actually um i gave it a 4.5 only because i didn't fully get those thriller aspects anymore because i already originally read it but um definitely this is probably the closest thing i know ted decker does write a lot of other uh fantasy books that are more darker that i do want to check out because i'm interested again in reading some more christian darker fantasy and dark suspense novels so yeah the girl behind the red rope is my answer um that was on my book cart because i actually just finished reading it so we're gonna move on to number eight it says the days are getting colder name a short heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold rainy day oh, a short one i don't have any short books per se um, you know what? I don't know if this, cla this is classified as cheating or not. And I flew through these, so I don't remember much. But any of the inspired books, uh, the love inspired books from, what is this? Oh my god, what's the name? Harle Harlequin. Their love inspired books are all short reads. Um, they're all heartwarming and sweet. And, um, this one specifically takes place during the, the, the winter months. Um, so... Any of these cowboy romances, we love to see it. Second chance romances, we love to see it. So these, um, if I had to pick a biblical fiction, if I had to pick one, I would say this one here, um, The Heart Changer, Only He Could Set a Captive Free by yarm del bochillo i'm probably butchering the author's name there it is but this is a middle grade biblical fiction set around the, the events from second king chapter five about the servant girl that was taken in by naaman who was a part of the syrian army and how she really had such an impact and influence on his household and coming to the faith beautifully written this is a really thin book i read this quickly um it's 116 pages long i i adored it like i was writing notes in here um you know, I was marking, like I said, notes all throughout. Let me see, annotating and stuff like that. So this as well would be a good option. So we have that. But I don't own that many, like, short reads. So <laughs> um, what's the next one? Number nine is uh, Autumn Returns Every Year. Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to soon. Um, I'd be lying if I wouldn't say Pearl in the Sand, but I'm not going to say that because I just read it. So I just reread the 10th anniversary edition. So I'm definitely going to have to go with Harvest of Rubies by um, Tessa Abshar. This is literally, of all the books from Tessa, this is my second favorite from her. The first, of course, being Pearl in the Sand. But this one has more of a comedic feel. It's definitely dealing with some dark things, um, some heavy situations. It features Nehemiah, which I love Nehemiah. This book is really what got me into the prophet Nehemiah, like... I love it. Um, I have yet to study the book of Nehemiah, but I will soon. But uh, this definitely would be an option. Um, 
definitely the mark of the raven trilogy i'm not gonna pull out the whole thing but uh this 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 right here i definitely want to reread um because i did not i don't think i read yeah i read the first two i okay so i read them all already but i did not read the physical copy of the third one yet i read the e-arc if you haven't seen my reading vlog for that i think it was like last year or so when i did that quickly i had to go watch that but i i just i love this series so much i would definitely love to go back into the world and visit it um is there anything else i think that's it yeah between harvest of rubies um the actual duology because the second book is actually harvest of gold um so harvest of rubies and harvest of gold or it would be the ravenwood saga from morgan lbc because we love to see it we love them so much but um yeah those would be the two options um 10 is autumn is the perfect time for cozy nights share your favorite cozy reading accessory so for this i kind of sort of did go ahead and get my stuff already um because i knew what i wanted to share so the first thing is some tea i actually have me some hot tea right here in my little mug um you guys should know what tea this is it's winter time it's fall time not winter but it's fall um pumpkin spice from bigelow we love it um i also love the twinings chai and french vanilla i don't like chai tea but the french vanilla one with some french vanilla creamer having sent so we have that um some candles the current the one i'm currently burning is from mainstays um pumpkin spice it smells really good i have another one over there called spun pumpkin sugar i kid you not my walmart is completely sold out of all of their fall candles like i've went to walmart twice since buying this they're empty they have some yankee candle ones but i'm not big on spending money on candles anymore like that um i feel like sometimes candles can be overpriced with the yankee and bath and body works i have a bath and body works um candle but i haven't lit it yet because they're expensive um what else i would say some cookies some white chocolate macadamia i have some right here white chocolate macadamia cookies are a must um if i don't do a tea then this right here this is the toasted white chocolate frappuccino this is the thing i'm always drinking inside of my dunkin donuts cup this is what it looks like okay so it says toasted white chocolate frappuccino from starbucks um i buy like 10 of these every time i go to walmart they're amazing so that with some of the cold stone creamer from international delights and then lastly some chocolates I've been binge eating these uh, Giardelli white chocolates. So that's that. Um, also, when you want to talk about more cozy vibes, I'm trying to figure out where to put all this. Hold on. Let me grab these. So I love fluffy socks. Like any type of fluffy socks. I actually have a pair of fluffy socks on right now. So um, any pair of fluffy socks will do. I have these. I got these when we went to a relative's for i think it was thanksgiving last year we went got these little fluffy ones they're amazing um i have these big ones here i got from five below only thing i don't like about these is that they unravel really quickly so like you really can't get that many wears out of them which kind of sucks um i picked up two packs of these i think they were like four or five in a pack um from Dwayne reed i think it was they were like two for 10 bucks so they come with like different ones these are mint and white i have a pair on right now that are gray and lavender and then i have these ones which i don't even remember where i got these but they're like fluffy and i love them um also a big fluffy blanket i'm actually gonna get the blanket that i'm currently using okay so we know i love the color lavender this blanket i've always been on a hunt for a really pretty lavender blanket and i found two so um this hair is like lavender and white florals the other one i have is all white with like lavender and mint uh creature like furry winter creatures in it so those and lastly some comfortable comfortable pajamas and if i don't do my candles then my oil diffuser which you can't see but it's on like right over there next to this stuff is over there um my oil diffuser with some really beautiful um scents so that's pretty much that and Number 11 is spread the autumn appreciation and tag some people. So I have four people that I'm going to tag. Don't know if they're going to watch this video. Um, so yeah, but if they do so happen to watch this video, um, then these are the people. And you can click down below to go to their channels. I definitely say support their channels and check them out. So the first one is Jenna from Jenna Van Marek. Um, I love her channel. She is phenomenal if you're looking for other uh, biblical fiction YouTubers. She is all about biblical fiction books. I actually just read her book. She I, I better read beta read her book that she's coming out with. Beautiful cover is here. The book itself is actually phenomenal so i'm excited for her 
releasing this book. I, I cannot wait for her to release this book. But um, definitely her, I'm tagging her to do this video. If she hasn't done it already, I don't know. But um, I'm also tagging my sis Jenny from Heart of Refuge. Sis, hey, I know you read. Um, Even if you don't have like Christian fiction that you read, still do this tag. Still do it. Um, Who else am I tagging? Uh, Queenie from Queenie's Place. I love you, girl. Clicked out to go to her video. Um, I don't know if I can click, put how many eyes I already have. So just so I'm just going to tell you guys to go to the description bar down below. But, um, and the last one is Catherine Bar Bartlett. I think I'm saying that right. Catherine Bartlett. Um, so those four YouTubers I am tagging to go ahead and do this tag. And anybody that I haven't named that hasn't done this tag and wants to do this tag, definitely do it. Even if you do it on Instagram or if you do it on a blog or on Facebook. However you choose to do it, I tag you to do it. I think this is a fun tag. Yeah, I highly, highly recommend you guys do this video if you haven't done it. Even, like I said, even if I haven't tagged you in it. Thank you again, sis Stephanie, for tagging me in this. I had so much fun doing this real time with you guys. Normally, I try to have my books already set, but I wanted to do it real time and give you guys a view of this side of my room because you normally don't see this side of my room. So, yeah. um, I'm going to have to fix all these books that... <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it whatsoever, but I'm going to fix all these books back. Uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!